In this video you will learn what is correct and recommended approach to write React code and Redux code. Not so long ago I got a message on the Twitter regarding my latest video about Redux Saga from Redux Toolkit Maintainer and he wrote there that I am recommending out of date approaches to write React and Redux code. This is why in this video I want to clear once and forever what are recommended approaches to write React and Redux code so all my subscribers are aware of them. And actually React and Redux evolved a lot during all these years. For example, at the beginning of React we had classes approaches. And nowadays you should not use classes because it is considered out of date approach and it is not recommended. The same is going with high order components which were highly used together with classes. And the same goes in the next step of React which was render props. We are typically not using them that often nowadays. What we are using inside React is only hooks. This is why if you are writing a new project you should not consider using classes, high order components or render props at all. You must just stick with React hooks. And there are pros and cons of using hooks, but this is a modern and recommended approach of React itself. And actually we still have support of classes so you can safely use them, but it is not recommended and we never know when they will remove classes support inside React. Now let's talk about Redux. This is where we have some confusion. Because actually we have plain Redux and we have nowadays Redux toolkit. And a lot of people are asking what is the recommended approach. So now I won't 100% say that the recommended approach is Redux Toolkit. And in some of my videos I didn't use Redux Toolkit, but just plain Redux. And actually this is not bad, because all these functions are still there, they are still supported, so we are getting things like combined reducers, create store, apply middlewares and so on from Redux, but this is not a recommended approach. And this is important. Previously I thought that Redux Toolkit is just a sugar around Redux, because we still have the slow level functions, from Redux we can write everything on our own. But essentially this is not completely true, because inside Redux team they want to leverage Redux Toolkit to write less code than with plain Redux. And they even consider to remove standard things from Redux, like for example create store, to switch to Redux Toolkit completely. But here is super important point, if you just want to learn Redux, you must first understand it without usage of Redux Toolkit. It is extremely important because this is the low level code and you must understand how to write it without any sugar. But obviously later in all your projects it is highly recommended to use Redux only through Redux Toolkit. And actually if you don't know what is Redux Toolkit, or you don't know why it is better than plain Redux, I have the full video where we are converting plain Redux application to usage of Redux Toolkit, and I will link it here at the bottom of the video. So why Redux Toolkit is recommended approach nowadays? Because it is much less code that you must write, and it is easier to understand this code. As you can see here how we are setting up store typically inside Redux. This is quite a lot of code. And sure you can read this code and you must understand what's going on here if you want to know Redux on a good level, but here is an approach of Redux Thunk. As you can see here we have just three lines with configure store and obviously it is much cleaner and more understandable. Also this is how we were writing reducers previously. Typically this is just a switch or if else construction where we are getting state and action and we must return new immutable state. And as you can see here on the bottom we now have a function create reducer where we can do exactly the same. And actually you can even write mutable code inside Redux to make it simpler for you. But I am not a huge fan regarding this approach, but still you can write your reducers just like you did previously inside plain Redux. And the last question that we must clear here is how to write asynchronous approaches with Redux and React. And typically inside Redux you have Redux Thunk and it is included by default inside Redux Toolkit and you can use such thing which is called Create Async Thunk. And this is how it looks like. Essentially this is just a helper to create asynchronous actions. And now inside our code we can simply dispatch these asynchronous actions. 
So nowadays the recommended approach to write asynchronous actions inside Redux is create a sync thunk. A sync thunk is still quite a low level approach. What we have additionally inside Redux toolkit is RTK query. The main idea of this tool is to simplify fetching data and storing them inside state. And actually, if you are familiar with tools like for example Apollo Client, this is exactly the copy-paste of it inside Redux. As you can see here, we are getting out of the box data fetching and caching, which actually means we can say when we need to invalidate our data and they will be stored inside our state. So this tool will create automatically properties like is loading, for example, to show spinner, and it will create a slice inside Redux to store fetch data. So if you are writing some code where you are fetching data, you are creating is loading state that you might consider using RTK query. And now most important question, is it really bad to use all the approaches, like for example Redux Saga that I mentioned in previous video. And yes, Redux Saga is quite told approach of writing asynchronous code inside Redux, but is it stable? Yes, sure. Is it used in a lot of projects in production? Yes, obviously. Was it updated not so long ago? No, this is really an old tool, but this is really stable tool that you can still use. Obviously it is not recommended by Redux team, but not every single old tool is bad. And another approach that might be interesting for you is called Redux Observable. And if you are coming from Angular world, you for sure know something about RxJS. The main idea here is that we can leverage RxJS to work with it inside Redux, and we can use observables to work with APIs. As you can see here, it is written that it is in maintenance mode, but it doesn't mean that it is bad, it means that nobody will break something inside it. And actually, if you want to learn what is Redux Toolkit and why it is better than using just plain Redux, make sure to check this video also.